Don't let me get in my zone! Don't let me get in my zone! Just what was Kanye's zone exactly? The world may never know. Theoretically, the song's title points to the zone being Paris. But which Paris? Perhaps this Paris? Or this Paris? Well, it's certainly not this Paris. Although they do have an Eiffel Tower. But in this battle of the Parises, only one Paris takes the cake. Actually, scratch that. Remember the last time cake was mentioned in France? Yeah, I think I'll stick to croissants. Which isn't hard because they can be sticky. Although not as sticky as the stinky streets of France as capital. And definitely not as sticky as all the sweaty tourists in the summer. Over 33 million each year to be exact. That's more than double Paris's metro population of 13.1 million, which makes it the third largest city in Europe. Why do so many people visit and live in this crowded, dirty, expensive city with gloomy weather for half the year? Find out in my top 10 reasons why Paris, France is the best city on earth. And let's hit 5,000 likes for a video on the best cities in Europe. Number 10, the food. A trip to the patisserie can easily have you saying, but get up to all the pastries before you realize the words even came out of your mouth. And once they do, you'll probably cringe at your terrible dad joke. But you'll forget all that as soon as those buttery flakes melt on your tongue. So don't stress too hard. Well, unless you're trying to work at a coffee shop, because then you're probably way too stressed since cafes are for conversation, you silly American. But while Parisians love their bakeries, they also value every gastronomic opportunity. As a result, the city is home to way too many of the world's best restaurants, bars, and wines. From Michelin star dining, to the crepes and jam bambure sold by street vendors, to the over 1,600 different types of French cheese, whether simple or sophisticated, Paris cuisine is delicious. Plus, portions aren't too big, so you can experience a smorgasbord of flavor without worrying about your weight. And if you prefer to cook at home, there are plenty of charming street markets with the freshest ingredients. Number nine, arts and culture. Parisians' good taste certainly doesn't end with wine and pastries, because their style is also hard to match. It's no wonder the city recently overtook New York as the fashion capital of the world, and it's likely the cultural capital as well. With nearly 300 world-class museums, ranging from the Louvre to the Musée d'Orsay to the Centre Pompidou, Paris is a mecca of creativity. Not to mention the many art galleries or street art displays in places like the Butokai. And the art also doesn't end on the canvas. From the gorgeous architecture of nearly every building and church, to the incredible music and performances inside them, ranging from opera to ballet, cabarets, raves, and comedy shows, you will never run out of things to do in this city. In fact, it would take over 200 days just to view each of the 380,000 objects and 35,000 works of art inside the Louvre alone. So it makes sense that this inspiring beautiful city is full of inspiring beautiful people. Number 8. The diversity. With over 13 million residents and people from practically every nation, Paris is one of the most diverse cities on earth. Wait, what? But in the movies, it's just croissants and berets and- Whoa, whoa, bold of you to assume. Cause I'll have you know, you can basically travel the world in Paris. A quick metro ride will take you through the largest Chinatown in Europe, Little India, Little Africa, the Jewish Quarter, or one of the many other diverse neighborhoods, such as Belleville, which is a cultural crossroads. Honestly, if it weren't for the signs being in French, you might forget what city or country you're even in. Paris is actually the second most multicultural cultural city in Europe, with 20% of residents being born outside the EU, and nearly 40% being second-generation immigrants. It's also one of the only cities where English is not the primary language used between foreigners. And in addition to French, over 200 other languages are spoken at home. And speaking of French and other languages, if you're like me and love traveling the world, learning new languages can open up a whole new world. Sure, English is a pretty universal language, but I personally feel you miss out on so much of a local culture if you don't speak the native language. And do you know how I learned French from my recent trips to both Montreal and Paris? With italki, which is today's sponsor. Italki is an online language learning platform where you can connect with a private language tutor anywhere in the world. And whether you just want to learn basic conversational skills or do more advanced test prep, italki offers customized one-on-one -on -one lessons with high-quality native-speaking teachers of over 150 different languages. I've personally been taking Spanish lessons with my teacher Paloma to help me prepare for a trip to Mexico City. And while I knew almost no Spanish going in, she's made me feel so comfortable and taught me many basic communication skills to help speak and understand beginner conversations just in our first three lessons. 
Sí, ok, so no, no, pero puedo hacer videos chiquitos. Ok, perfecto. Para cerrar, puedo hacer cortos. Plus, since you pay per lesson with prices starting at just $5 and no subscription or commitment required, there is no excuse to not try learning a new language. Especially since the first 50 users to sign up for italki using the link in the description and my promo code here there will get an additional $5 off their first lesson. So what are you waiting for? Start your language learning journey today. Number seven, the walkability. Even with all the fantastic food and wine, Parisians stay pretty healthy since the city itself only spans 105 square kilometers or 41 square miles, meaning most people walk most places since it'd be foolish to own a car. I mean, for perspective, New York is 300 square miles and most people don't even own cars there. So yeah, there's few places in Paris that a bike or your own two feet can't take you. In fact, Paris is the third most walkable city on earth. And if you don't feel like walking on a particular day, the Metro, which was just voted as the best public transit system of any city, is super affordable and spans 227 kilometers with 308 stations. So you're never more than a few minutes walk from one. But that doesn't mean there isn't traffic, because with all the tourists and a population density of 21,000 people per square kilometer, the streets and sidewalks can get really crowded. It is a mega city after all. Number six, it's really safe. Despite being a mega city, Paris is incredibly safe. Muggings, robberies, and violent crime are all very rare. Well, unless you're a certain celebrity. But plebeians like you and me will never have to worry about our life being in danger as long as we aren't total idiots. I mean, the murder rate in Paris is four times lower than the US as a whole. Sure, compared to Northern European cities like Copenhagen, Amsterdam, or Oslo, Paris isn't that safe. But those are also much smaller and some of the safest cities in the world. And Paris is still much safer than any large US city. Now, don't get me wrong. Wrong, you will run into scammers, pickpockets, and petty crime if you act like an oblivious tourist. But if you employ some common sense and don't walk alone in dimly lit empty areas at night, you shouldn't have anything to stress about as long as you don't go paying off some rando on the street when they say you dropped something and then accuse you of robbing them if you don't pay them a finder's fee. Ah uh, yes, the classic gold ring scam. Consider yourself warned. <laughs> Number five, location, location, location. Unlike the US where most people need a car to just get around their city, much less when visiting other cities and sites, Parisians don't even need a car to leave their country. Between the plethora of high-speed rail and cheap flights, you can get to most major European destinations lickety-split. Plus, you won't need to rent a car once you arrive since public transit is fantastic in most parts of the continent. Paris is a mere two-hour train ride to London, one and a half hours to Brussels, three hours to Amsterdam, Amsterdam, and four hours to the gorgeous Mediterranean beaches or ski slopes of the Alps. Meanwhile, a less than two hour flight will have you in Rome, Venice, Berlin, Madrid, Barcelona, Copenhagen, Prague, or pretty much anywhere in Western Europe, including Vienna, which is just waiting for you. Number four, work-life balance. If you're thinking, who the heck has time to travel? I got work. First of all, you're probably an American, but also quit worrying. 35 hours is the only thing capping about France's work week because I'm dead serious when I say work a minute more and you'll be paid double. And don't even think about talking about work on the weekends because it's actually illegal. Seriously, I'm still not capping. Look it up. Not to mention, you're required at least six weeks of paid holiday and 11 public holidays each year. Although most French companies actually offer eight to 10 weeks of vacation time. Wait, so then how do they get any work done? Well, because Parisians work less, they're much more productive in the time they do work since they don't get burned out. Work hard, play harder is the motto, and I could probably learn a thing or two about this whole work-life balance considering it's three in the morning as I'm writing the script. And with long lunch breaks and excellent job security, the laid-back French culture creates so much less stress, which ultimately allows people to be happier and focus on their passions and relationships. Number three free healthcare. Okay, so it's not exactly free, but when you go to the doctor, you'll automatically be reimbursed for 70% of the cost, and the other 30% will usually be covered if you have a private complimentary insurance, which is often provided by your employer. Plus, low-income individuals get extra coverage, which makes everything free. And it's not like they're cutting corners considering the French healthcare system is among the best in the world. But that's not all. Every level of French government also has their own subsidized program for low-income families because they prioritize what any good government should. 
It's citizens. If you're not earning a lot, you can get extra money to help with basic needs like rent or childcare. And school's also free for children over the age of three. That's a lot cheaper than the U.S. where daycare can cost just as much as university. But speaking of university, that's also nearly free here, with tuition only costing around 170 euros per year. Now, before we get to the final two, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and let me know any other videos you'd want to see about Europe. Number two, it's beautiful, eclectic, and vibrant. Magic dwells in every corner of the historic city of lights. As you stroll down the street, you might follow the faint sound of music of one of the many street performers as the melody trickles from an alleyway, only to find an entire row of hidden shops and restaurants. Or perhaps you'll stumble upon the secret orchid fields in the Luxembourg Gardens, or the waterfalls and cliffs of the Parc de Boutes Chaumont Grottoes. And with 421 gorgeous municipal parks and gardens, many located along the beautiful River Seine, you'll always always find a spot to picnic, a staple of Parisian culture. But it's not just the nature that's breathtaking here. Literally everywhere you turn is another picturesque view of meticulously detailed architecture, aesthetic bridges, charming narrow brick-lined streets, or public squares full of sculptures and fountains. Ironically, we have the Tour Montparnasse to thank for the incredible views in every direction. Because after it was built, Parisians hated it so much that they voted to never allow any more buildings over 37 meters tall. That limit recently changed to 180 meters, but Paris has maintained its unique charm and soul ever since. Number one, you'll learn to stop and smell the roses. There's a reason Paris is known for romance, and that romanticism permeates into every facet of life. Stress and rushing have no place in a culture where Parisians value relishing the pleasures of our existence. If something doesn't get done, there's always tomorrow. Why get overwhelmed? Instead, just be present and enjoy the time we have. Sometimes a pastry is just too good to not spend 30 minutes savoring, or a conversation is just too interesting to leave. It actually isn't uncommon to spend hours upon hours at a restaurant, and there's always room for dessert. Really, everything here is just more fluid and less strenuous, from the swearing and nudity on television television to the time people arrive or leave. And speaking of leaving, that is something you will never want to do once you move to Paris and fall in love with the place. And who knows, maybe you'll fall in love with something else too. After all, it is the city of love.